Good morning, or as I should say, since we're in the Netherlands, Goedemorgen. I try my best. Uh, my name is Andrew Youssef. I'm the head of marketing and corporate communications for Sani Germany. I will be speaking on behalf of Mr. Louis Kuhn, uh, who unfortunately was unable to attend, um, but he sends his regards and actually wanted to pass on a short message to his Chinese friends and colleagues. Daja hao, go e lindao, go e lai bin, huan yin nimen. Wo yao zi ji jie xiao, wo shi an de lu yue su fu, nimen kui jiao wo da xiong, xiong mao de xiong. Bu hao yi se, Wu Zhong Cai Bu Nang Lai, in Wei Tayo Chen Zheng the Wenti. Wu Zhu Wei Shi Niman Zhong Guan, Do Zhi Dao Naga Chen Zheng the Wenti. So, uh, so to continue, I'll give a short presentation. Welcome. Yeah. Well, I basically said that the, um, my colleagues were unable to, unable to make it because of visa issues. And I can uh, probably attest to most of my colleagues coming from China that visa issues are a huge problem. So that's another reason why he was unable to come, and I've taken his place. So I'll give a, uh, during this presentation, I'll speak about five topics. Uh, a brief overview of Sandy Group, our subsidiary in Germany. I will touch on our products we're entering the global crane market with. Um, then to the market anal analysis, where I'll go into detail with regards to Chinese and global markets in the crawler crane and wheel crane. And then next, talk about a few of the new trends that Sani's experienced, as well as finally some construction cases in China, which we have, uh, which we have to, to, sh to give you examples of how we've uh, identified these trends. So to give you a brief background, Sani Automobile Hoisting Machinery is one of the core business units of Sani Heavy Industry. It is mainly engaged in the research and development of high-end, mid to large tonnage crane series, including mobile crane, crawler crane, tower crane, and knuckle boom crane. We have two industrial parks in Ningxiang and Huzhou, and are exclusively used for the design, development, and production of our crane division. It has been nearly one decade since our crane division, uh, since we entered the market, and obviously because of the rise of China, we've grown rapidly. Uh, but now we're beginning to penetrate overseas markets um, because of the reliability of our equipment. Uh, one of the primary reasons for Sani's rapid growth, like I said before, the rise of China, but on the other hand, is because of our commitment to research and development. Each year, Sani puts in 5 to 7 percent of total revenue back into research and development, not just for the recognition, uh, but to achieve the standards and directives of the international community, which we were obviously touched on earlier in the various presentations. And with that commitment, we also replicate it in our production uh, with a modernized manufacturing base, which can be dim uh, digitally simulated to eliminate waste and create a more efficient workflow. That commitment is apparent in our facility in Germany where I'm now based. Uh, this was a 100 million euro facility uh, that is now um, beginning the localization of port equipment which I was a part of and now moving on to the corporate communications and marketing which I'm very proud to be here and speaking to all of you. So with that said, our if you see most Chinese companies, they manufacture in China and then ship overseas, whereas Sani did a little bit of a different strategy. We decided to become more local. So we built this facility in Germany to obviously uh, penetrate the market and also understand what the local markets need, the local directives. We're using our research and development there so that we can adhere to those standards. Uh, that commitment obviously needs to have after sales service as well as spare parts supply Okay. Uh, spare parts supply for the market as they see fit. So to move on with a short product introduction, uh, Sandy has four categories of cranes with over 80 types, uh, ranging from truck mounted crane, tower crane, and the largest crawler crane with a capacity of 3,600 tons. Uh, I would just like to highlight uh, some of Sandy's um, developments. Um, one of the best selling cranes we have is the SAC series with the special attention paid to the SAC uh, 12,000, which is Asia's first 1,000-ton all-terrain crane, which was su successfully released in March 2010. Moving on to crawler crane, uh, which, which is one of the core businesses of Sani Heavy Industry, I would like to bring your attention to the one of Sani's milestones, which is the SCC uh, 36,000A, which has a 3,600-ton lifting capacity. Uh, this crane was released in 2011, and at the time was the largest crawler crane in the world. Uh, in the past decade, Sani has benefited from an enormous growth in the Chinese domestic market. 
Uh, in the next few slides, I will elaborate uh, on the present state of the Chinese and global markets as they pertain to crawler crane and wheel crane. If you see the first graph, uh, I'll try not to go too quickly so you guys can get the numbers. Uh, this graph tells a story of the past three years from 2010 to 2012, and you can see clearly that 2010 was the peak of the crawler crane sales in China. Uh, in 2010, 1,600, uh, excuse me, 1,067 units of crawler crane were sold in China, and sales in 2011 and 2012 were 1,702 respectively. In 2012, the sales of mid to smaller capacity crawler cranes under 250 tons declined 25% than that of the large ton above 250 tons. And the dynamic compactor fell by 3% and 47% respectively in those years as well. This is due to the well-documented decline in the Chinese construction industry. Many infrastructural projects in China have been put on hold such as the high-speed railway construction, roads, and other works. But I can tell you from living in China, it's not all bad. I can finally sleep at night. So now moving on to China's wheel crane market. The wheel crane market maintained high growth between 2007 and 2011 with, annual, uh, with an average annual rate of 19%. The market demand peaked in 2010 with 31,463 units sold followed by a decline in 2012 due to the previously mentioned uh, domestic economic climate and slow development of the relevant sectors. Now moving on to the global market, uh, if you look, sales peaked in 2008 with 12,100 units. The market shrank by 15% uh, due to the global economic downturn of 2009. Since 2010, the market has experienced recovery growth due to increasing demand from developing countries. We are optimistic for 2013 and moving forward, mainly due to the European and North American markets recovery, and we see potential in countries, as Dominic alluded to earlier, in sub-Saharan Africa, as well as Australia, Indonesia, Malaysia. Now moving on to global market for crawler crane, sales reached the highest level of 1,865 units in 2008, then started declining in 2009. A recovery growth was witnessed in 2011. Uh, it is estimated that the sales would reach about 1,570 units by the end of 2013, with a year-on-year -year growth of 7.68%. The growth is mainly driven by the increasing infrastructure uh, construction of newly emerged markets, and the average annual growth rate is expected to be around 8% in the next three years. By 2016, the market demand is expected to reach 2,000 units worth 2.5 billion euros. After speaking about the uh, current state and projected state of the Chinese and global markets, I now want to pay focus to some of the trends that we're seeing. And although some of these trends and technologies may not be brand new to the majority of the people sitting in the audience, for Sandy, we have seen much, uh, much, many trends in the software demands and the standards compliance of our equipment, not only internationally, but now more and more amongst our domestic local Chinese market, uh, customers. Therefore, in large tonnage cranes, these types of demands are quite common. But in smaller cranes, uh, we're beginning to see some interesting trends. The first one is there are many more mega projects going on in the world. And with this, there's the need for supersized lifting equipment, which is essential. Take, for example, the construction of a nuclear power plant or petrochemical company. Uh, sorry, petrochemical plant. These types of projects require tonnage of over 3,000 ton lifting capacity, yet at the same time, these projects are pushing manufacturers to be faster with lead times and more convenient with transport, assembly, and disassembly. Therefore, we're seeing that the market needs supersized equipment, but at the same time, minimal transport and assembly costs. Uh, the next one I'm going to talk about is, oh, excuse me, uh, is China's wheel crane industry will start to move towards a more, uh, more gradual internationalization of its standards. Uh, the regulations on equipment safety and reliability will be strengthened uh, with special focus paid on transport dimensions and weights. Many countries have started to impose more strict limits, as I said, on transport dimension and weight, which means tremendously higher uh, transport costs will occur and if the weight and the dimension exceed the allowable limits. In order to reduce the single-piece transport, 
uh, more importance has to be attached to the modularization of the spare parts, leading to improvements in the spare parts commonality and standardization, which is not only beneficial to us as a manufacturer, but also more um, beneficial to those uh, who are buying the machines, the customers. Again, uh, new trends. Um, obviously, a more specialized uh, equipment, but yet can be more uh, multifunctional, especially for the small tonnage trains, such as free hook drilling, as well as double hook hoisting. Um, the R&D of the wheel crane will become more specialized, obviously, as the industry develops as well. So you'll have cranes that are obviously geared only for wind turbines, assembly and maintenance, and all-terrain cranes for mining or, in the case of that we've had in China, disaster relief. Uh, and then finally, of course, is the environmentally friendly part of it, uh, with the increasing development in the auto industry for batteries, powered, or hybrid, uh, I believe this was also influenced the crane industry. So, if you look at the next one, you see it, like I was saying before, the auxiliary software applications. More and more customers are asking to know exactly in real time what is happening with their cranes. Therefore, the market demand has pushed crane manufacturers to make 3D hoisting simulation software, real-time gravity display functions, as well as ground pressure calculations. Uh, of course, in the larger equipment, this is quite common, but in the smaller ones we're seeing in China, also those customers are asking for those types of uh, features as well. Now on to the specialized equipment. Uh, in China, we're seeing a large demand for dynamic compactors. Uh, this is a economic and efficient method to work on a foundations uh, excuse me, work on foundations. And in recent years, projects like quarrying and reclaiming land from the sea uh, in China has brought big market as well as unprecedented opportunity for dynamic crawler, uh, excuse me, crawler dynamic compactors. Um, and then moving fur further, the rapid compacting, uh, according to the analysis of compacting uh, construction, the time for compacting auxiliary operation takes about 40% of the overall uh, recycle time. To improve the efficiency of construction, rapid compacting with no decoupling, characterized by fast lifting and no auxiliary working time, will be the mainstream of future dynamic compactors. Now finally, my last part of the overall construction cases that, you're, that we are now uh, in progress in China, you can see we have obviously several models. We have the uh, SAC 12000, which is the industry's first 850 ton hoisting crane as well as the SAC 12000, which is, you can see in uh, Jinjiakou, uh, Hebei province, uh, for the uh, wind turbine farm that's going on there. Now moving on, you can see also in China, you have wind farms as well as petrochemical plants. The SAC 6000 and the SAC 3500 uh, is able to be suitable for those types of applications. And then I was saying before, with regards to nuclear, um, SANI obviously has, as China grows, the need for power will obviously be there as well, and SANI has the uh, capabilities to provide those types of cranes as well. So for Fuqing nuclear power plant in Fujian province, we used uh, the SCC 10,000. And then again, finally, the last picture is the SCC 9,000, which is also being used in Fujian province for an additional nuclear power plant. So in summary, the global market for crawler crane and wheel crane will recover, although not to the levels of those in 2008. Emerging markets as well as the recovered Europe and North American markets will, br uh, will lead in bringing those levels to that of 2008 or at least near that. And the new trends for large capacity lift equipment but with limitations on dimensions and weight will force manufacturing and logistics companies to adjust in order to capture the market. Focus on the environment is going to be essential and that will lead in the future development of cranes and transport. And SANI has identified in order to be successful in high-end markets, support, parts, supply must be in place to give those customers an uninterrupted uh, product as well as uh, operating time. So that is all for me. Thank you very much for your time.